Okay. So, um, basically, I've been thinking for a while of, like, what I think my opinion of the current 1.1.15 version of the game tier list would be. And in the past, I would have definitely said uh, Sheik was by far the best, and I put her on her own tier, because around, like, 130 or so, she'd have, like, a down throw into, like, a 50-50 up air or a vanish. Sometimes it's a combo, and the only way to really escape was to uh, air dodge it. But then if you wait for the air dodge, then you're still screwed, because then you get up aired or vanished anyway. Her having that made her amazing on top of all her neutral game stuff. However, not having a kill confirm anymore at very high percents have made her much worse, but I would still put her in the top 5. So, right now, I think uh, Bayonetta is most likely the best character, and that's because multiple moves that she has is a launcher that can pretty much kill you. The ground side B, with or without the kick, can launch you, because you do the basic side B into an up tilt, or you do the side B with the kick, and both of them launch you up. Down tilt launches you up in the air, the first hit of fair launches you up. The aerial downwards side B move launches you up, and uh, if you get hit by a witch time, you could also die. Any of those moves, if you get hit at zero, there's a chance that you'll die. I played Salem in friendlies at MVG Shots Fired 2, which was March 6th to 8th, that happened recently. <clears throat> and Salem actually beat me with two stock 2% in one of our friendlies. Overall, I'd say he won like 60-40, so it was back and forth. But one game, he I literally did only two damage. And I don't remember if I hit him, or if that was Magnifier Glass damage. I think it was Magnifier Glass damage, which means it was the first time I ever got JV3 stock. All he did to me was outplay me twice in neutral, one of them, I think he hit me for side B, and another one, I think he hit me if a, it was a down tilt or an up B. Oh yeah, up B also can kill you from a launcher. So she has multiple moves that, if you know the sequence, and you aren't smash dying perfectly, you might die from her combos. Obviously, that takes some skill to do, but the fact that you have to watch your character die unless you get the perfect smash die, assuming she knows the sequence, that's amazing, because that's multiple different moves she can use to kill you. Her neutral ain't that bad either, because you got things like space back air, neutral air, a projectile, fast speed, pretty good recovery. And her up B is... Her up B and Rob's up air, just random knowledge, goes through Cloud's down air. So if Cloud's down airing and it's lingering out, both those moves will actually go through the down air without trading. I'm not sure about the first three frames of Cloud's down air, because that's a bigger hitbox, but the linger one definitely loses every time. So I would put rank Bayonetta's number one on the tier list right now. Number two, I would say that's probably Rosalina. I think this is, I think two and three, yeah, no. I would definitely say Rosalina's probably number two right now, and this is mainly because, um, well, if you look at results, obviously, you know, the buzz is doing amazing at tournaments. You can't just ignore results, that's important. And uh, she was top three in the game. Rosalina, Zero Suit Samus, and Sheik were the best three characters, alongside Bayonetta. Um, but with Sheik and Zero Suit's nerfs, obviously Sheik's was more significant than Zero Suit's. But Rosalina staying the same. I think that there's a good, there's a strong case for Rosalina being number two in the game. Just Luma being amazing, her, her, her being able to control neutral game, good recovery. She's just overall very good, just very solid overall. Number three, I would still, I would say Zero Suit Samus. I think she's third best in the game right now. And her nerfs were actually not that significant. I thought originally they might be. But um, actually the down throw change, so it scales a lot. So it's actually weaker at lower percents than before, but at higher percents it knocks further. However, at many mid-high percents, she still has a down throw up B regardless of your DI. So if you get grabbed on like Smashville, and you get down thrown at like certain percent range, uh, certain percents, especially near the edge, you can get down throw, comboed into up B regardless of your DI, and that will still kill you. So yeah, the down throw does less damage, up air does less damage. I think Nair's a little worse, but Nair's still good. Before you could do a Nair to uh, the down B kick, and the down B kick would kill you. And now they changed the angle, so it's like a little more upwards instead of to the side. However, it still works, it's just not as good as before. Before it would work like all the time, and now it still works, it's just not as easy and not as common. But it's still very good. The grab, I think the the grab, it, it doesn't linger as long, so you can actually spot dodge it now. Although the total time is like 3 frames less. It's still very good, so 
She still has the same tools as like before. Side B whips, I think, a little better. She's still very strong. I'd put her definitely in the top four. Right now, I think she's number three. Now, it gets more debatable here. So I'm actually going to go on a whim and say something that's you'd probably say is unpopular. And you could call me biased or whatever. I don't really care. Because I'm just going to say what I think anyway. I think Diddy Kong might be number four. And bef a year ago, I wouldn't have said this, but that was also because he hasn't really gotten any worse in the past year. Whereas all the other characters, besides the appearance of new top tiers like Bayonetta, Cloud, Ryu, uh, all this competition was has been worse. Zero Suit's a little worse. Obviously, Rosalind is the same, but that's why I rank him higher. And uh, Sheik obviously got quite a bit, bit worse before she was the best character by a lot. So I actually think, thinking of the characters, and considering how strong neutral game is in this game, I think Diddy Kong might be uh, the fourth best. So that that's... Well, you could call that a risky statement, but I actually think that that might be the case. And uh, playing Zenota this weekend, I was kind of thinking Diddy was amazing before that. Uh, playing Zenota this weekend, he actually double eliminated me, in, even right after I beat Anti. So it's not like I was playing that bad. It just felt like really hard because... If Diddy hits you, or throws you away, he gets a banana, and then his neutral game is amazing. So to elaborate on that, well, if he just blocks your move and throws it at his shield, a banana at his shield, he can either do a down tilt to a smash attack, down tilt to a grab, basic smash attack, basic grab, and all these do quite a bit of damage. If you're at like 110%, you might die. If you're in the middle of the stage and you can't even get the, uh, the F smash, you can do like down tilt to... Um, uh, an up smash at like 130 and kill you at the edge and kill you at like 100 with a down tilt, a banana to down tilt to down smash, stuff like that. And uh, the thing is, y you might be like, oh, just shield it, you know, shielding beats banana. So that that's really strong. However, the thing is, if Diddy has stage control, which will happen a lot because he's going to throw you off the level, if he does a side B, the side B grabs from really far away, and if you're not expecting it, it's harder to react. If you're expecting only side B, yeah, you can do like a spot dodge or try to punish it. But if Diddy's mixing up, oh, I'm just going to side B randomly, but uh, sometimes I'm going to wait. Sometimes I'll throw the banana, or I'll throw the banana spaced into down tilt, and that's also safe. Um, these are mix-ups he can do, and if you're not predicting what option he's going to do, it's hard to react, because it's not like he only has one option. He has a few different options, and one of them's a good range grab. Uh, he also has a side B kick, which can ledge cancel, so if you don't want to do the grab, you can still do that. I just think he's very strong overall. So, yeah. I forgot to put the curse on Diddy. Oops. Okay. So, now, I would actually put Sheik, instead of being SS tier, which I used to put her before, I used to think she was a tier of her own, didn't go worse than 50-50 in any matchup, and I think that was agreed upon by many top players. Now, if the throw change, I think she might be 5th place. So, I would still put her in the top 5. She might be better in Diddy, too. She might be as low as 6, maybe as high as 4th. But anyway... Roughly around 5th in my opinion. She still has all the same tools as before. Needles don't go the entire stage. They reduced range by uh, 17%. It used to go, I think it was 6 units. And now it's 5 units. Because that's how they measured it. So it still goes most of the stage. She still controls neutral. Her running shield is still like frame 8 or 9. Which is 2 frames faster than most characters. Which is like a frame 10 run shield. Uh, her forward throw to uh, fair fair fair. Or forward throw to bouncing fish. It still works, but it's not as good as before, because they changed the angle. So she does have good combos. It's just not quite as amazing as before. And the main difference at high percents is um, her down throw. I don't want to... It might be what you'd call ruined. However, F throw pretty much replaces it. Uh, at many percents, it especially against fast followers, or like Cloud with Limit, because he falls faster, it will still combo. At mid-high percents, it's a 50-50, and at ve an extremely high percents, it just doesn't combo at all. So if you can get, if you can live against Sheik to really high percents, and then you DI like, I think it's up and away, and at a very high percents, then it no longer combos. So now sh she doesn't have a guaranteed kill off grab anymore, she just has a solid positional advantage. But with, with remaining, with, with her having all her amazing neutral options, she's still a very strong character. But it's obvious that she got worse from the patch. So I'd rank her, I'd move her away from SS tier, which I used to have her before, and I'd put her in a, around 5th now. I tried to order 6 through 15, um, but I couldn't figure out a way. So I'm going to go through the characters 
just from the top, just from here to the bottom, of who I think the next 10 characters are in no order. Because I honestly don't know how to rank them after that. I'm just going to name who they are. Mario. Not sure about Man Knight. I think Man Knight's a little worse than me for. So, yeah, there's Mario, Fox, Pikachu. I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say Lucario. An unpopular opinion, but I think the character's potentially that good. I saw in a tournament in, um, it was like a Mexico attorney, and, uh, the Lucario player, he up through Meta Knight. Lucario had, like, it's like 130 rage. That's, so that's not even max rage. And the Meta Knight was at, like, 42%. And he did an up throw up air kill combo. Imagine ha having a kill grab at 40% just because you have high rage. That 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 will happen with Lucario in certain matchups. So, and the fact that characters like Diddy and Sheik don't really kill him that fast. He, he will be good against characters who don't kill quickly. However, he has a huge weakness to characters who kill quickly. Like Ike and Ness can crap on Lucario. But Lucario could maybe even have the advantage against someone like Sheik. Because of the way the character is designed, stacking R and Rage together. He gets to play at his best against characters who don't kill easily. So, th the card is debatable, but I wanted to mention I thought he was underrated. Rob is another character I think is super underrated. He has ledge traps. Kind of like, he has ledge traps with the gyro, which can combo into his up smash, or combo into a down air. So if you dro do a, like a ledge jump, he, he can drop a gyro and do like a down air. Or, he can keep the gyro there and keep center stage, and then combo the gyro to an up smash. Those are very powerful tools. But he also has a kill grab with down throw up air. Up air is completely busted. I don't know why no one talks about this, maybe because Rob's not that common. I tested it. It goes through down... Cloud's down air is a pretty big sword. It's a pretty big move. It goes through that move queen with up air. But n that's just up air in neutral stance. What I'm talking about is Rob's down throw up air. It's not quite as good as Donkey Kong's grab, but it works at more percent ranges, and it's still a kill grab. And when it isn't a kill grab at very high percents, even when you get past the range of it being a kill grab, it's still a kill 50-50 because you can air dodge before you can do other moves. So at mid-high percents, it's a kill grab, like a guaranteed kill grab at like under 100. And um, at the very high percents, it's a down throw to a 50-50 to up air. So that's, I think having a kill grab and ledge traps, I think both of those two factors are very important in this game. And that's why I think this character is very underrated. And I can see him anywhere in the 6 to 15 range. By the way, the 6 to 15 range, I would consider that A tier. So SST would be Bayonetta, possibly Rosalina. And then I put S tier as like, Zero Suit, Diddy and Cheek. And now these 15, these 10 characters are around A tier, in my opinion. <clears throat> Ness is self-explanatory. We all know he's amazing. Having a back throw kill grab, an up B where you can just edge guard people without risking yourself. Good priority. Just we, we all know he's very good. I wouldn't put Falcon there. I'd actually put Falcon at the, the top of B tier. Simply because I don't think he's necessarily better than these other characters. I actually find him slightly overrated. I think Falcon is very good. Very, very good. But I feel like as the game evolves, he his recovery could be exploitable. And I... No, some people are going to be like, wait, you put Lucario and Rob over Falcon? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. That's just my opinion. And either way, the, all those three characters I just named are very close, so... It's not like there's a huge difference, in my opinion. Villager, we all know how, how good he is because of Renai. He's getting third Genesis. You know, that, that, that already right there just speaks for itself in winning Japan. Renai literally proved how good Villager is. That's all that really needs to be said. <laughs> I wouldn't put Dark Pit there. I would not put Dark Pit in the top, um, the top 10, but I still think Dark Pit is very, very strong. And I'd say Pit's very strong too, but I, I know most people think Pit's better. I actually think Dark Pit's better because he kills to the side. And I feel like that's real useful because you can edge guard, but you know, what do I know? Um, Mega Man's very strong. I wouldn't put him top 10, but I think he's very good. Sonic, easily top 10. A contender for number 6 because of his neutral game. Uh, he's definitely... I would say he's between 6 to 15, and while it is true that I don't know how to rank him accurately, I would definitely put him at the higher end of that. Speaking of that, Mario is very good, but I think uh, Sonic is better than Mario, personally. So even though I'm not ranking them, I just want to add like little pieces of information that I think. Um, Ryu, self-explanatory, um, very strong. His down B, it's one frame. His up B, I think it... 
puts his super armor on one frame, so that, that would make him having two one frame moves which can kill you. Just having those tools, even as mix ups, are amazing. I definitely put him top 10. Cloud, I actually find Cloud very overrated. However, I think he's super good. I, I would definitely put him like around maybe between Sonic and Mar or Mario, or maybe around the same level as Sonic. I don't know, but he's definitely within this range, and he's definitely better than uh, the characters in B tier and below. Like, Cloud's definitely better than, like, Falcon, for example. So, Cloud's very good. I don't think he's quite as good as certain other top players are saying. Um, Corrin, I'd put Corrin around, like, the same level as Cat and Falcon, maybe. Like, maybe the top of B tier. I actually think Ike and Corrin are around the same level. I'd put them, like, around the top of B tier. Let me look it over to see if I missed anything. Hmm... Did I, did I go over Pikachu? Yeah. I went over, yeah, Pikachu, like, we, we all know how good he is because of Sam. Fox has, you know, we all know how good he is because of Larry. Like, just his tools. Okay, so yeah, I think those are the characters, the next best characters. I don't really know how to rank them, I just wanted to talk about them each a little. I don't feel comfortable ranking all the characters simply because I don't quite know exactly how good all, all they are. I'd actually like to see buffs for certain characters, like... I think Bowser should get his old kill grab where he could back throw and back air you. I feel like he needed stuff like that. I think the character is designed to be super strong and powerful, and I think he should get rewarded the most for getting a grab because that's what the whole character is. Imagine giving Zangief from Street Fighter, imagine if his grab only did a few damage. Imagine if Bowser had Cloud's grab, but Cloud had his giant sword and everything else. That wouldn't make any sense, would it? Uh, uh, um, obviously his kill grab is very good, Have, get, being, able, being able to grab it like, what, 85 up throw, a down, um, then tossing you into an up air, that's really strong. i definitely like to see buffs for the characters I didn't named. So that the game would be more balanced as a whole. Because I would definitely think that after the characters I named, uh, there's a little bit of a tier gap. So I'd like to see the game be closer to where all the characters are around equal, if possible. Okay, so now I want to talk about why I think uh, Cloud is actually a bit overrated. I could see him as high as number 6. I could see him as low as number 15. I know some people are putting him at like... Somewhere between 2nd to 5th, I think that's a joke, uh, but I, I can explain why. It really comes down to the fact that you can shut down his recovery pretty hard. I don't know if I can show this, these examples alone. I'm going to attempt, I guess, but I'm just going to tr maybe try to explain the theory of it, perhaps. Um, I don't know if the computer is going to do this well, so I'll have to try to think of how I can do this. But basically when you're recovering, I'll just pretend I'm the one falling. So if I'm recovering here and I use my double jump and I'm here. It, okay, so I'm going to pretend I'm recovering, right? I'm, I'm the cloud recovering. Let's just pretend I'm recovering. If the other cloud or the other opponent positions themselves right there where the computer is at this angle, not quite a 45 degree angle, but around here, that's a very good spot to edge guard him. When I'm Cloud, I have three options to recover. I can do an aerial, which could mean this, this, or that, one of the, my three aerials. I could air dodge, or I can do nothing and call it a bluff. If people are waiting for me, that means they're waiting for lag. Which means if I do an air dodge or an aerial, they see, oh, the Cloud lagged. Now I'm going to hit him with a punish. So let's say I'm, let's say I'm Sheik and I'm following with a Cloud. I, f I jump near the cloud so that the cloud gets scared because he knows that any moment I can do a double jump back air. Because, so let's say Sheik's back air, it's frame 4, and a double jump is frame 1. So you have to double jump for at least 1 frame. So 1 plus 4 is 5, that's 5 frames. A human reaction time is roughly, for me, it's about 13 frames. 5 is way faster than 13. So as long as you position yourself under them at like a 45 degree angle, um, then you can threaten your, you can move this much distance with a double jump into the bear. You move this distance in only five frames. That's called an, what I call an unreactable. So just by your position, you can pretty much edge guard cloud very, uh, effectively. Almost any, almost every character in the game has an aerial fast enough to do this. Obviously some, like Sheik's Fair, uh, a Cloud Nair and a Cloud Ditto, or like Mewtwo's fair, or anyone who can gimp sideways, that's pretty much a guaranteed kill. So basically all you have to do is stay under cloud, 
and then guess a 50-50, and when you get the 50-50 right, you pretty much kill him. The best strategy, in my opinion, most of the time, is to fall under cloud, because at any moment, you could do it a double jump bear, so if I if I throw, throw cloud off stage, I can just do the double jump bear right there, and then he's dead. If the cloud decides to not air dodge or not attack me, he's just dead right away. But if I'm falling with him normally, a human, they might air dodge. So see how I did the bear the first time? Now that they know, oh, I have to air dodge the next time. All I have to do is fast fall, double jump, and bear. I can do that off autopilot or reaction. So the two ways of doing it is uh, you, d you just do it right away or you do it on a reaction. So basically it's always going to be a 50-50 between attacking right away or waiting and or reacting for it. In either case, no matter what the situation, you always have a 50-50 of killing him, or a 2 out of 3. What, when is it a 2 out of 3? Well, imagine you're very high in the sky, and Cloud's just falling helplessly. From, like, you F-smash Cloud off stage and he's falling hopelessly. And then you get near him, and then the Cloud has to decide. I have three options. I have Air Dodge, I have Aerial, or I can call their bluff and just do nothing. Most players aren't smart enough to even do the do nothing option. So most players most players are gonna air dodge. And then sometimes the player will try like downer or something. However, because you're the person under them, all you have to do is get near them. And that triggers the human reaction time and says it tells them, hey, hey Cloud, at any moment I can do this and kill you. So they have to respect that. They have to understand that there's always the chance of them doing that. And since Cloud doesn't have an amazing side B or an amazing air drift or up B without the limit, that is a weakness. And if you're not abusing that weakness, it's not a very effective way to beat him. So I'm, I actually have a written out document that I wrote of explaining much better than the way I explained it now. Because I don't feel like I explained it too well now. But I have a written document that if anyone wants to read, read in the YouTube description below where I talk in detail about how to Edgeguard Cloud and why the situations on his recovery are 50-50 chance of gimping him or a 2 out of 3 chance based off the situation and it mostly comes down to the fact that he can either air dodge he can aerial or he can do nothing at all if you're trying to react and I do an air dodge I'm screwed because then double jump I'm dead if you're, tr if, you're, if you're reacting, once again, and I do an aerial, you fast fall, double jump, aerial, I'm dead. If I decide to do nothing and you're waiting, then the recovering cloud wins. However, if you know the cloud's going to do nothing, then instead of reacting, either do an instant aerial or a fast fall, double jump aerial. And those that's a 2 out of 3 chance of you winning. So if you both you and the enemy cloud knows all your options... Depending on the situation, you have a 50-50 or a 2 or 3 a chance to edge guard him. And it mainly comes down to the fact that he only has 3 options. And uh, you can always cover them at least half the time or more. When you cover them, he's dead. Also in general, yes, when Cloud has an up B, um, has a limit up B, obviously it goes very far, but there's two things about it. One is that you have uh, Cloud wastes his entire limit, which now takes 0.4 more seconds to do than before. He wastes his whole limit to to do to recover. So you make him waste his kill move, and now he has to he's going to struggle to kill you again. And now if you get thrown off stage again, his recovery is much worse. So you can force him to waste his limit, which is very valuable, and then he's in a bad spot. Also, the first half of the rise in the up B, the first half of the rising has a hitbox, the second half doesn't, so you can literally run off stage and do like, you can literally run off stage and do like a nair and either trade or beat him. A lot of times you can literally just beat Cloud by doing a nair to trade, so if Cloud's doing a basic move like a basic up B, you could run off stage and trade with him with like a Mario nair. A lot of times it's gonna trade, and when it trades, if Cloud's at mid percent or higher, he's dead. The, as I said, the limit up B doesn't even have a hitbox, the, the full rise. Only the first half of the rise has a hitbox. The the end the end half, I don't know if it's the entire second half, but the end of it does the end of it near the top doesn't have a hitbox. So you can literally just run off in there. And then clouds up the lo, cloud lost his limit and then you gimp him again. So his re recovery is really exportable and people need to actually take advantage of that. 
Another thing that's really exploitable, um, exploitable is the fact that he doesn't have a kill grab. Up throw will kill at like... This will kill at like 180 if you like DI away. So basically when any other move will kill, like a tilt will kill, way sooner than that. So if you keep shielding at high percent, Cloud can't do much. But then you're thinking, oh, I can just do the, uh, the limit side B. Well, did you know that you can spot dodge that last hit of it? So if I do this, you could spot dodge the last hit. Now, that will work like 80% of the time because uh, statistically, you're, uh, my, my, ling my moves only linger for one or two frames in the side B. But um, the spot dodge, when you spot dodge, almost any spot dodge in the game, you can only be hit on frame one. Frames two through like 15 or so, depending on the move, is all invincible. So your odds of getting hit is like one in five, if anything. So if you have a very tiny shield, just spot dodge the end of the move. And then you don't have to worry about your shield breaking. And then all Cloud can do is throw you off the level, and then you recover safely. The Cloud's best option is to like throw you off the level. Most of the time, the best option after that is to actually sit on stage charging limit. I found that to be the most consistent. You can go for a risk, but if you, if you guess wrong, you might die against a good player. Against lesser players, it doesn't matter too much. But against a good player, you might get punished for that. You, you just might randomly die. So, let's assume the best option is to throw you off stage and get a limit. That's not- oh, throw off stage and get a limit. That's not the worst outcome. I can't catch this club. So you just do this, and then you just keep stage. But since I have no reliable way to kill you, I have to get a read. With with the nerfs on both limit attacks, and uh, the fact that it takes like almost half a- 0.4 to 0.5, I think it's like 0.42 more seconds longer to get to the limit. People would say that's not a lot. As a cloud main, I feel it a lot, personally. I think that makes a much more significant difference than people trying to pretend. So, yeah, basically all it is is the two weaknesses of Cloud. You could mix up edge guarding like this, or double jump here, or just react. And by doing that, you always have a 50-50 or a 2 to 3 of killing him. Assuming that your move kills. Like in a Cloud Ditto, the Nair will kill. But if I was to do like um, a Sheik back air, it might send it too high of an angle and or be weak enough where I have another chance. But by the second time, I'm still dead. So you gotta exploit his recovery, and you gotta exploit the fact that uh, he doesn't have a kill grab until like 180 or so. Recover safely, just play it safe, and I'm not gonna get a kill very easily. And I, I feel like most people play while I'm playing aren't really playing that safe. They're just like, I'm just gonna throw an attack up. So I have a limit. So like, I'm getting a limit, right? And uh, th so they're at like 100%, and they're trying to like, charge at me without using shield, so I'm just like, okay, you're dead. So like, be a little smarter, don't just be that dumb, and then it's gonna be harder. And then it comes down to like, conditioning, psychology, like, obviously like, if they, if you know that they know to shield, and you know that about the player, or you notice it in, during the set, then you can start grabbing them more. But even still, the fact that I don't have a kill grab, I just have a crappy grab in general, that's a weakness you can exploit. But if you're not exploiting it, if you aren't taking advantage of why it's bad, then is it a really, really a weakness? If you're not playing the actual matchup, and you're trying to fight Cloud when you're at 100% and he has a limit, and you're not using your shield, then you're going to get destroyed. If you're not gimping him or doing the 50-50s that I was saying about doing an instant aerial or double jump aerial on reaction or on guess, then you're not really playing the matchup properly. And I feel like people aren't playing the matchup properly, and uh, I think that's really hurting them. If Cloud had Sheik's old down throw, or Diddy's old up throw, he'd probably be like, easy, like, top two in the game, but he doesn't. And um, if Cloud had uh, Sheik's bouncing fish to recover, yeah, he'd probably be first or second in the game, but he doesn't. And the fact that he doesn't have these things means you have to take advantage of his weaknesses. If you don't take advantage of his weaknesses, then imagine throwing the Little Mac off stage. It's like, okay, Pretend, pretend this character is Little Mac, I throw him off stage, but now instead of trying to edge guard him, I want to let Little Mac come back to center stage. Let's let him build his meter up, and then fight me center stage where he's at his strongest, and then kill me with a powerful attack. If you're, n That's the worst way to fight characters like Cloud and Little Mac, obviously, but everybody knows that, so don't play it like that. Edge guard him more properly, stay under him at a 45 degree angle, do an instant aerial, mixed with a fast fall double jump aerial, and... Furthermore, the fast fall double jump aerial can be on reaction or on a guess. So you can get near him, make him want to air dodge. Most players, if you get near him, they're going to air dodge right away. So you fast fall double jump aerial, they're dead. But if you're at a very high distance, you can fall off them and look at them, see that they missed a move, and then do the double jump aerial. Every situation has at least a 50-50 or 2 out of 3 for you, for you winning. 
in those con in those situations. If Cloud's very close to the stage, obviously, it's more than a 50-50 for Cloud recovering. But I'm talking about if I was to hit Cloud off stage like this, and then he's doing that, you can do stuff like that and kill him. My explanation was, I think, mediocre here, but I will... As I said, I have a written explanation below on this YouTube video where I spent, a, I spent like two hours writing it out better than the way I'm explaining it now. So if anyone wants to read it on the YouTube video that I'm making right now and should be up tonight most likely or tomorrow, then uh, you can probably learn a lot. This is, just, this is not just for beating Cloud. This can work on any character. However, let's say I'm fighting a Mario and the, I get near Mario, Mario panic air dodges and I do an aerial. The thing with Mario is because... Um, because his horizontal drift to the left and right is so much greater than everyone else's, than Clouds, for example, and his up B is so much better, even if you hit him with the aerial, like let's say I fast fall and do a double jump bear, he still has another chance to live. Now, if you hit Cloud with this in a Cloud Ditto, he's dead. Unless he has a limit attack, he's dead. Oh, and you can just run off an aerial his limit up B. As I said, the second half doesn't even have a hitbox. And even the first half... You can often run off and trade with a lot of moves, and if you trade, you win. Bayonetta can literally hold the A button, mindlessly. Just run off, oh, Cloud's there, hold the A button and kill him. Remember what I was talking about, how you can just do the double jump aerial? Okay, well, get this, Bayonetta can literally hold the A button. So even if you guess wrong, so if I try to do this in attack, but oh, they air dodge through me. Guess what Bayonetta can do? She can keep holding the A button, and the move lasts forever, and then gimps, and then you're dead. So that's just something Bayonetta specific. But these are like high level concepts that I don't think many players are doing. Like I see a lot of people, like even top players, like they'll get caught off stage and they won't jump at him. You got if you're not jumping at him, you're not threatening him. Basically, you have to be within their human reaction time. So imagine this. Imagine a cloud is recovering from here and I get near him. Now you now you're fighting and you're like Oh crap, he's so close to me, at any time he, he can attack, and since I'm a human being and not like an uh, insect with a one frame reaction time, I have to be like, oh, he might attack in very quickly and I can't react to it because he's too close. Now imagine the same scenario where I throw him off stage and I'm walking over here. You're not threatened, you can literally look at them and react to what they're doing. And I see a lot of people not jumping off stage against Cloud. What you have to do is you have to jump at him close enough where, where you're within uh, their du the double jump range but you're far enough to be out of his fair range you don't want the fall you don't want the enemy cloud to come down and hit you with a falling nair you don't want that enemy cloud to come down and hit you with a down air you want to stay outside of that range but within your range is that possible yes it is possible because i'm telling you right now it's possible you can pretty much do it for every character and that's mainly due to the fact that first off you have i have no choice but to drift toward the stage because i'm recovering so on recovery i have no choice but to drift toward the stage but also double jump only takes one frame Let's look at how fast I can move um, with a double jump. So this is a double jump. I have to double jump for one frame, and then I can nair the next. Look how far I traveled in only a few frames. That did, what I just did right there is unreactable. It is way it is way less. So if basically if it's under if it's 13 frames or more, basically that means that it's potentially reactable. If it's under 13 frames, it's unreactable. So one plus. My nair starts behind me, so that what I did there is like a 5 frame nair. This is under 10 frames, that whole sequence. But you see, see from the circle and how far I traveled? That's my threat, that's where, that's my threat range. It's a, the threat range is actually even more than that. And it, see how big that window is from the bottom of the circle to the top of my nair? That means that, uh, that whole huge range there is where, what, how far you can attack. And you control the pace too, so you can just always fast fall and double jump at any moment you want. And I have to be scared that at any moment you do that. The best way to recover is to try to read your patterns and see what you don't know. However, if you know all the mix-ups, statistically the odds are in the person edge guarding. I, sh I should not be recovering more than half the time against somebody who knows all their options. And that's pretty much what it comes down to. And that's what's going to separate a... Uh, like, for example, Cloud from somebody who can recover, like, um, like Sheik who has a bouncing fish. Of course, I'd say, I'd say Cloud and Sheik are way more comparable now. They're, they're much closer in tier than they ever were before. I think Cloud's only very slightly worse. I know certain number of players think that Cloud's better. I don't. Um, 
But the point is, it's obviously way closer than before, but let's talk about recovery. Being able to bouncing fish at any moment, that changes everything. Oh, and some characters, they don't have to air dodge toward the stage. Characters with better recoveries can air dodge away from the stage, but then still make it up with an upbeat. Like, um, let's say a, a, a Mario or a Sheik, they can air dodge away from the stage, and then still go low and recover. If Cloud does that, it's super risky, and if I'm far away, it's not even an option because I don't drift far enough. Having re good recovery means more recovery options. But most players don't use auto options, because I, I think most players either aren't smart enough or they just don't know any better. Now as I said, in the below description on YouTube, I'm going to have this written out in way more detail. So if you don't like the explanation I'm giving here, don't worry, because there's a much better explanation that I'm going to give on the YouTube video. Uh, in written, it's like 10 paragraphs long, just explaining in different ways what I meant. And I think I explain it better there than I do here. So... And Cloud's nerfs, um, down smash, this kills like 2 damage later, F smash, kills 4 damage later, the limit cross slash kills 2 damage later, I believe. It, ch it takes way longer to charge, or it's like, it's like 0.42 more seconds, so like, a little less than half a second to charge, but that also affects his killing and his recovery, meaning it's riskier to throw out kill moves. Oh, and the aerial finishing touch, according to a video I saw, I think it kills Marf at like, it used to kill Marf at like 64%. And now it's like 88%, so that's from so that's like uh, 24 more percent to, to get the kill, so it's quite a bit weaker. And I think that these things added up, I think there's one more thing I forgot, oh, up air. Uh, up air doesn't kill just 2 or 3% later, it actually kills 12 if you do a cloud did on FD, I tested this with my friend, it used to kill at 149, and now it kills at 161, so from a ground level and training mode on FD with no DI, it's a 12 damage difference. Although... Some people say it doesn't. they don't feel it much. I think it's significant, and I feel it a lot. Maybe I'm biased because I'm a cloud main, but I think, if anything, that makes it matter more because I can really feel the differences because I play the character all the time. Most of my up air kills are when my up air is fresh, and it's only one of my top two moves in the QE, or whatever you call it. And then I'm doing this, and they're at, like, mid-hundreds. But I haven't used the move much, so... Uh, it's stronger. Now, if anyone's played Brawl, you know that staling is a huge thing. In Smash 4, it's still huge, but it's not as huge as Brawl. However, it still matters quite a bit. And, uh, I think if you keep your up air fresh, it can still kill good. But, I find myself getting up air kills way less than before. So, I think the fact that they nerfed all of his major kill moves. This move's nerfed, the limit side B is nerfed, F smash is nerfed, up air's nerfed, limit's nerfed, and there's like some other thing. Just because none of those individual nerfs were quite as big as, like, Shay Sheik's throw chains, um, I think the fact that all these nerfs add together a little here, a little there, a little here, a little there, a little here, and a little there, it, ma it makes the final product a lot worse. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Cloud is bad by any means. I'm just saying that the current perception of him is sli slightly overrated. I'd put him anywhere between uh, 6 to 15, probably on the higher end, so pro most likely in the top 10, but I could see him lower than that too as the other characters get better too. Another thing I want to mention is that the reason I don't think that Cloud's quite as great as everyone says, I'm not seeing random Clouds come out like I see random like Bayonettas for example. For example, Tweak, one of the best Clouds, was also the best Bowser Jr. in the world, best or second best warrior in the world, a pretty decent melee player, he's obviously good as he's proved with other characters and in another game. Zero using Cloud wouldn't surprise if he does well because Mean Zero and for me, Mean Zero are like the best two overall Smash players. If you were to average all of like four or five Smash games and just average their overall playing skill, I think Mean Zero would be like the top two in any order. So, because of our fundamentals and just our ability to use other characters. And then you have Komakiri from Japan, who's the other best Cloud. He's the best Sonic in the world, hands down. He's anywhere between first to third best Cloud, and, and his one week or several day Bayonetta won the Japan tourney he entered and was beating Renai on his stream the majority of the time versus his villager with uh, using Bayonetta for less than a week. So what I'm saying is I think Cloud is an amazing character, but he's similar to Mario in the aspect that if you have strong fundamentals, that the character will, you would do amazing well because the character is not like complex. Let's compare Cloud to Pikachu. Pikachu and Cloud, I think, are around the same level overall. However, Cloud's picking up Cloud, if you're just a good overall player and you just want to pick up a strong character with strong fundamentals, Cloud's way easier because it's, it's not hard to do things like, oh, space your sword and stuff. 
With Pikachu, you have to learn, like, the quick attack cancels and all that stuff. It's more character-specific. Like, using Almar. Now, it's not, Almar's not a good example. I'm trying to basically say, it's... All you have to do is have good, strong fundamentals, and the fundamentals take you really far. It, less than, um, having a very specific... Oh, I have to know these tiny little things about the character in order to use the character effectively. Like, Marf's chain grab in a melee, knowing all the percents and stuff. That's, like, character-specific. I don't know if I'm explaining this properly. Hopefully I am. I'm just trying to... Get people to understand the way I think, so that they understand how I form opinions. So I don't, I don't really care if you call me biased or whatever. I'm really just the type. I'm the type of person who doesn't really care. Or if I do care, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not going to change anything. Because even if I care, I'm still going to say what I think regardless. I just say what I, I just say what I think is true. And I'm trying to explain my mindset on it so that people can understand and relate. You don't have to agree. You can disagree with everything I say. That's fine with me. But a lot of people told me they wanted me to share my opinions, why I think the way I do, teach them a bit about Smash. So I was trying to do that now. This is like my first stream actually sitting down and like really doing this. So I hope that this has actually helped people. Um, I'm not sure what the feedback will be, but I do know that multiple people told me that they wanted to understand the way I think more. So I'm trying to give you an example of why I think that people overrating my character a bit. Cloud is still very good, but I don't think he's top three at all. I, I, I think that's complete crap. But I do think he's very strong, and I think he still has what it takes to win a major. I wouldn't be surprised if Cloud would win a major, but I wouldn't put him better than the the, the top the other characters above him. And I wouldn't really separate him much from any of the other A tiers. I said I think those characters, ten characters I said, I think they're all very close. I wouldn't. I don't know why I haven't even seen more Ryu's, for example. Like you could just look at Ryu's moveset and say, oh my god, this character is ridiculous. It's like saying, uh, you know how co common, I don't know if anyone plays Melee, you know how common, like, uh, Cat and Falcon was in Melee? Cat and Falcon's like ten times more common than, uh, Jigglypuff. But then, do you see Falcons winning? No, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna say, uh, Falcon, there's more Falcons in, like, a top 32 than there is, like, Jigglypuffs in a top 32 at any, like, tournament. But then, you see Hungrybox still winning, and people are like, oh, Hbox is just that good, but, like, no, like, dude, Jigglypuff is just that good. Like, I think Jigglypuff's, like, the third best character in Melee. At Genesis, uh, at Genesis 3, just before the top 8 started, I was in, like, Armada's ho ho hotel room, like, warming him up with, like, Marth and stuff. And he told me he thinks, uh, Puff's number 2 after Fox. And, but that's obviously, like, for a different video. Like, talking about Melee, that'd be for a different video. I'm just explaining that, like, the, how common a character is doesn't necessarily determine how they are. Also, I don't really care about, like, the common trends. Most people don't really think for themselves. They just... Look at like what a certain like what other certain players are saying like oh everybody says a uh, fox is the best in melee this must be a fact so I'm always gonna say it. and I even to this day I still think Falco might be better and I don't think Puff is far behind Fox either but I think both species in melee are very close together I still think Puff's like number three probably Marf's four and like then Sheik and Ices and whatnot but again that's for a different video. I just don't think many people really try to think for themselves, or they get biased too easily, or they or they say other people are lying or biased. That might be true for some people. I'm just letting you know it's not for me. Just I just want to clear that up. If you choose not to believe me, that's okay. We, we all have wrong opinions, and if you think that way, then you have a wrong opinion too. Um, but yeah, not much else to say. Oh, um, up air, sometimes it... Some some people said it does combo better, but it, it acts, it's very specific. At 0%, doing stuff like this... Um, well, I would have to kill the cloud to show you. So, um, doing low, doing upper, upper strings from, say, 0% actually combos worse. So, before, I could, like, get a limit and just do multiple up, uh, multiple up airs in a row. But now there's less hit stun, so it's not as safe. Also, on platforms, uh, when I do the up air, there used to be more shield stun. So, I could, like, kill a shield faster and then chase them with pressure. You can't do that as well anymore. Shielding on the platform is a little safer. These are just tiny differences, just random knowledge I'm sharing. So I'm trying to think, did I cover everything? Yeah. So if there's more to say, I'll just uh, add it to the document below. Again, there's going to be a text document on the, the bottom of this YouTube video in the description. There's going to be a text document, and that should have more info. And I believe that's everything.